Yeah, uh, tough cut. Uh, boxing's not his sport. So he got, he got cut pretty good. He was good the other day. Obviously, the concern was the placement of where the cut was and how deep the cut was. He's good. I'm disappointed that he didn't get to finish that game because I, I thought he was on par for a monster performance. 11 rebounds. Um, I'm curious what he would have it's, it's, yeah, no, I'm curious what he would have ended up with. Just overall road trip impressions, what do you think you saw from the team and having to be on the road for that long and forced to be together for that amount of time? You told me before that we'd come back four and three. You know, I would have taken that before the trip. We could have canceled the trip all together. That's, that's tough to do. I think you see a lot of contending teams, guys, you know, Warriors, things like that. That's normally when they hit their roadblock during the season. You go on six, seven game trips. It's just tough to sustain. You catch teams on back to backs and you're out of gas, and you catch a team with their best shot, momentum at home. Um, so, four and three, and, the, and the, the good thing is, you know, felt like we could have won in Portland. And definitely felt like we had a chance, and I thought we should have beat Utah. We shot 46 threes, and when you look at them, and you look at the type of three, wide open. Our bigs had eight uncontested threes in the, uh, in the first half, and Dwayne, Amari, John getting those type of looks. I'll take Alex had two. I'll take those looks all day, every day. And so, you know, it's a great, great performance to go four and three on a seven game trip, 14 days. Um, but really think we could have done more. How um, difficult is this day? I mean, years past, obviously, it's the trade deadline tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to be here. They are going to be here. I mean, how difficult? We had a great conversation in the film room. Um, you know, Miles is our leader. He's got four trades under his belt. You know, Justin has two, and Vince has two. Uh, Baze has one. Uh, so you see kind of the candidacy. We had candid conversation we had uh, with regards to it. And, and the lesson really is, you know, it's 24 hours away. And for 24 hours, we have no control of what's going to happen. Uh, the positive look at it is somebody wants you if you're moved. Uh, the positive look at it is once your trade deadline comes and goes, wherever you end up, you're still in the NBA. And it's the only thing you can really concern yourself with. We've seen great players get traded. We've seen marginal players get traded. Um, we've seen it happen prior to the deadline. We've seen it happen right up until the deadline. And so it's just part of, it's just nature in our business. It's nature in sport. Um, and we'll be fine. And that was a conversation. I was candid in telling the guys. I've had conversations with Travis for the past couple months. Uh, rumors, speculation, thoughts, all of that. And it's what every team should do. And it's what we've done. In a lot of those conversations, I can't even remember who was involved and what it was for, and they come and go. And so we've got 24 hours to deal with it. And uh, you know, the guys worked. They came out here and worked today and got a lot of shots up. Great player development day. Uh, and so we won't see anything until game time tomorrow when we do our walkthrough. And at that point, we'll know. Did everybody practice today? Everybody except for Miles? Miles the only guy out. Yeah, we got him, and this is crazy it's 16 bodies on the court having both the two-way guys here um, so it's a great day a lot of energy um, good to have everybody in the gym and especially coming off the road trip just to get back and just be home and be settled and we had a free off day yesterday to just get errands done but to come back in the gym and just feel good about being here everybody was on the court and it was a short and sweet and uh, they'll have some some momentum to get through today Philly yeah. made a massive trade last night. What are your thoughts on that? They are all in, and I'm happy for them. Um, obviously, it, it's it's more than you know. I think the trade signifies that they're they're still making a run. They've had ups and downs. With, you know, kid they drafted Smith hasn't played. Markel obviously hasn't been around. Um, you know, their two way guy Shake Milton just gets hurt the other day, and so they've had so many ups and downs with their roster. They're scrambling to just put something together, but to, get, to add Boban, Tobias Harris, and Mike Scott to your roster, three guys that definitely can make an impact for you uh, deep, deep in the playoffs. You got depth, center depth, uh, you get pretty much an all-star in Tobias Harris, and uh, you get Mike Scott who gives you shooting, and that's desperately what they need. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for Coach Brown, I'm excited for his group, I'm excited for 
the potential of what they can be not only this year, but it puts them in position to sign two really good players and just make a run. The windows are short, the windows close quick. And so they know they're in that window right now. And they've got two young guys that can be there for a long time, but they're adding two vets that can also be there for a couple more years as well. Uh, so I'm excited for Coach Brown and, and Eldon. Eldon's, Eldon's, Eldon's not messing around. <laughs> Dealer Brown. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Trey and John made its all star commitments with the dunk contest and the, uh, the Rising Stars game. Talk about the recognition those guys are receiving I on a national it, scale. Yeah, I think it's great. You know, John's a guy, 19 pick. Uh, it's kind of that middle point out. There's no hype for the 19 pick. And um, if there's one guy that deserves a little hype and a little recognition, it's John Collins. Uh, you know, close to 20 and 10. 60, 58 percent from the field, um, 36, 37 from three, 74 from the foul line. And we're talking about a big man right now. And we're talking about a big man that's, um, you know, just you can almost book it. It's a double double, and, and it's a very efficient manner that he's doing it. So I'm happy for him to, to get on the national stage, to play in the, the Rising Stars Challenge game. And, uh, be a part of the dunk contest on Saturday, which is a big, big day in the All-Star Weekend. Um, so I'm excited for him and family to be able to go down there and just kind of rub elbows with some of the big time. Uh, not, not just our current players, but to be around the alumni and the legends of the game and to, you know, when we, and he and I talked about it, when you come back, you're going to be different. But when you come back next year, there is no Rising Stars game. It's the All-Star. And, you know, a lot of people want to make that all-star jump. You got to go through. You got to go through just being part of the weekend and rubbing elbows with some of these guys and seeing the bravado and seeing the pride, hearing the stories. Um, and you get a sense of, I want to be a part of that. And I want to feel like that's where my career is headed. Um, but until you do so, you, you don't know. You're just kind of 19 and 10, I should be an all-star. Nah, there's a lot that goes into it. And that weekend teaches you. Commitment here, commitment here, obligation here, speaking to that, speaking engagement with way more people. Um, there's, a, there's a lot in the profession that comes with being an all-star, and, and to be a part of that, even just for a couple of days, is, is really an education. You walk out of there, come back from all-star break, and you're different. And, and we've been a part of it as a coaching staff in Cleveland. It's different, it really is. So I'm excited for both he and Trey to, to participate, uh, to enjoy it. They won't get much of an all-star break, but I think they'll get a, a lot of enjoyment from being down there. Any concerns about the dunk contest? Going to look one eye kind of open and close with John. Make sure he doesn't do a somersault or try to dunk from behind <laughs> the, the backboard. The he jumps too high. You know, he yeah. jumps high enough as it is. I, I haven't seen him jump with adrenaline. And, you know, Vince has been educating and helping him already. And he's doing stuff that's so basic to him that's bizarre to us. And there's no adrenaline right now. So... You know, when you look up and you know that millions of people are watching and there's a packed house, you know, that, that's going to be the interest of like how high is this kid going to jump when he's got adrenaline and he's amped up for it. So I'm excited for him, right? You know, he's a great athlete and to be on that stage is, is, is history in and of itself.